dan il-program se riġi miġju plilek min Express Trailers. Logo Graphics. Jasmine Mitzi Financial Advisors. Databyte. Hortofile. Chemimart. Sara Hair Salon. Happy Day Juices by Rauch. Nsemmilkum il-qakum għal-edizzjoni uħra ta' Indeb. Kif għedin ta' rawn insab fil-Parlament Ewropew fil-Strasburgu u għallum san intervista l-MP socialista Anna Gomez. Thank you very much, Anna, for accepting this interview, short interview. Last Saturday, there was the Socialist Congress in Lisbon. And when the Prime Minister of Malta went on stage, there were your colleagues who were applauding for him. However, you um, started uh, shouting crook, the word crook, and shame on you. Were you the only one doing this? I'm not sure if I was the only one, but I was certainly one of the persons who, who cried shame. And it was not just shame on Mr. Muscat, but it was also shame on the organization of the Congress that allowed him to go there, because it, I, I think he doesn't give a good name to the socialists. He doesn't uh, enhance the credibility of socialists. He is the leader of a government that still hosts two people that have been totally exposed in Panama Papers as crooks, as uh, 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 criminals uh, uh, responsible for uh, tax evasion and for uh, receiving bribes. And that has been confirmed by the latest revelations, for instance, of Black 17 and of uh, Malta's own FIU reports and uh, that they can still be protected in a government. Uh, it's obviously not something compatible with socialist values. But the fact that you were the only one, doesn't this isolate you I from don't the think rest? I was the only one and uh, many people actually came to me and, and cheered me and, and uh, showed their support. And even how here in the European Parliament, actually many people were not there, came to me uh, saying that uh, they support me in indeed this uh, uh, this uh, indignation but I was not the only one there some other people also did the same and uh, I really believe that uh, um, it's very unfortunate that indeed uh, someone like Mr. Muscat with his record uh, by hosting in his government these corrupt people with the, the record of Malta under his uh, premiership uh, stalling justice for uh, uh, uncovering the, those who ordered the murder of Daphne Caruana Galizia has been uh, uh, allowed to stand as if he was someone that would give any credibility to our political family. It doesn't. And I have said that there, expressed my indignation as someone who knows about the issue because I've, as a member of this parliament and as someone who, who went several times to Malta in the framework of these investigations, both on Panama papers and on the, the murder of the African Arwana Galicia. I know what I'm talking about and because I believe that others would have the obligation also to know and not to allow this person to continue to discredit our political family. And I will not be uh, silent but do on you, that. Do you, um, am and I understanding correctly that you are saying that behind the Daphne Caruana Galizia's assassination, there is the hands of the Prime Minister? No, I'm not saying that. Okay. You are saying that. I'm not no, saying No, no, because that. you said that. No, me. no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that. I, I'm questioning. I I'm saying that justice is told in Malta regarding the case of Daphne Caruana Galizia. Has we, uh, me and two other colleagues, put in a report yes, last yes. June? Uh, after having uh, spoken to different interlocutors in Malta uh, and uh, the, the family uh, uh, has not been properly heard, uh, several uh, testimonies that were important to uh, dig were not properly heard. There was n there's no one charged for ordering the murder and obviously the murders are not those who uh, are not only those who placed the bomb but actually who ordered them to place the bomb. 
so there are uh, different elements that uh, lead me to continue to say that indeed justice is told in Malta regarding the case of Daphne Carrel and Galicia. It's also quite outrageous that the people that uh, demand justice are being and who evoke a memory are being every day chased in Malta from uh, the, the place that was yeah. initially chosen as uh, a memorial to, Daphne's, uh, Caru to Daphne Caruana Galicia. It's very disturbing the fact that all the revelations that came out in the meantime regarding Black 17, um, 17 Black, right. uh, are, uh, uh, have not been uh, uh, the object of, uh, of uh, 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 follow-up by the police. The, it's quite disturbing the fact that even the, uh, the report on e-grant has not been made public, public full, in full, in completeness. Uh, so, and the most disturbing factor at all uh, is uh, indeed uh, the fact that uh, two members yeah. of the government, I mean the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff and uh, uh, one minister, not only are kept in government, but are kept uh, in a position to indeed continue their criminal activity, as it was demonstrated recently with the revelations on uh, 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 Malta. But are you saying that the, the, the Maltese laws, the Maltese courts, um, you don't have um, trust in them? No, I'm that not saying are, that. No. I think that there are obviously uh, very fine uh, and, and serious operators uh, in all sectors, including definitely in the judiciary. But I know the limitations that they face. I know that the system in Malta, uh, even if the, the magistrates do their job, ultimately it will come to the head of the police to decide to press charges or not. Uh, the same thing uh, uh, with the Attorney General. The Attorney General is not fully independent. Uh, uh, he, he works you for the You are aware that it was always like that, right? But, but it is wrong. Okay. It's something but. wrong, and it is particularly wrong when uh, indeed there is a, 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 the political will to exercise the control in a way to prevent indeed the law enforcement agencies to operate independently. That's the reason why there are no charges pressed on any of the people that have been exposed by the Panama Papers, on uh, uh, that, that indeed uh, justice regarding Daphne is being stalled, uh, and uh, that also many any other uh, aspects, cases of corruption mm -hmm. and so on, uh, have not been pursued. Uh, namely, for instance, the cases regarding Mr. John Daly, the former commissioner of the EU, European. who was dismissed uh, back to Malta and till these days did not face any charges. Mm -hmm. uh, I know, I, I spoke with the chief of the police and I understand that ultimately he cannot do anything if the prime minister doesn't allow him to do what he, yeah. he, he needs to do. That's the, why I say the system is, 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 is manipulable, it's, it's, it can be manipulated and I, I believe it is being manipulated despite uh, the fact that uh, the system has obviously very serious and able and competent operators at all levels. I'm pretty sure they exist in the police, in the FIU, in the, in the judiciary. Many of these people who have actually came out and, and, and uh, blew up information, like Mr. Jonathan Ferris, were lately persecuted and exposed to all sorts of, of retaliations for being a, uh, for uh, being uh, coming forward with the information. However, the, the FIA, you are saying that uh, it is illegal to um, leak a report. It, it um, might be illegal, but the question is: these reports have been leaked. They are in the public domain. It's yeah. it, it's it, it's much worse that that there is no action seen mm. to be done by the authorities yeah. in face of these revelations, regardless whether these revelations were put out. Uh, in the public domain, legally or illegally. They are in public domain. Okay. They require action by the authorities and we don't see any kind of action on that. It's the same thing with the, with the, the financial questions. Remember the first time that I went to Malta in the framework of the Panama Papers investigation? We asked a lot of questions about Pilatos Bank. It was obvious that Pilatos Bank had not a sustainable uh, business model. It was obvious that there were a lot of questions that ought to be asked by the uh, MFSA, but were not being asked until we exposed them and then the European authorities, namely uh, European EBA. Banking Authority, 
forced the Maltese authorities to take action. And after these many of these revelations were actually put out, uh, an, an action taken by the US by arresting yeah. the leader, the, the owner the of Pilatus Bay. Yeah. Okay, but let, let me a bit shift a bit the argument. You have been working for the past two years very closely to two Maltese MEPs who do not appertain, obviously, to your po social political group, which are uh, Roberta Metzola and David Casa. They are two nationalist uh, um, MEPs. Um, however, uh, recently you also um, criticized their own leader, Adrian Dalia. How credible, one would say, um, is this situation when you see that you have been attacking both leaders Look, at the same time? I, I don't enter the Maltese logic of trying to portray this as a, a fight between uh, uh, Labour and nationalists. I am a socialist. I am a true socialist. I am more demanding with those from my political family, about from whom they have higher expectations than from India and any other people from other parties. But when I see corrupt criminal behavior, regardless where it comes from, I act and I call the 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 the, the names to yes. that they are deserved. I say the truth as. A, it, it, as I see it. Have the two MEPs approached you? And of course, in this, I have been working with all the people that I think have behaved correctly, honestly, diligently to uncover the truth. Yeah. Whether they are from my political family or whether they are from other political families. To the right, like it is the case of uh, Roberta Metzola and uh, David Casa, or to my left. And for instance, I've worked in this very closely with my colleague, uh, German colleague Sven Gigold, because I thought he was also serious and thorough about trying to understand what was at stake in Malta. So I will work with everybody that is democratic and that is I see as serious people really trying to uncover the truth. And I will not be deterred trying to say, oh, because it is uh, uh, from another party, I don't work with them. Here in the European Parliament, we work across the aisle. In the same way, I, in the past, when Joseph Muscat was a campaigner, was campaigning to, campaigning to be prime minister, I remember that I was asked to, to, endorse him. To, to endorse him. And I did because I had a good impression about him. I'm sorry, in this moment, I don't. So and you made a mistake? I did make a mistake. And I, I, I say this based on what I have seen throughout uh, this process in which I've been uh, trying to dig what is the reality in Malta n as a result of the revelations of the Panama uh, yeah. Papers. And even more so after the death of... Um, of Daphne Caruana Galicia. May I point to you that it was Daphne Caruana Galicia herself who had denounced Mr. Adrian Delia as a, 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 indeed a crook and a criminal, or or at least with a, 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 not I don't say criminal, but with a with a, a questionable behavior to be the leader of his party uh, because of his activities, namely with business uh, of dubious origin. Uh, well. Uh, apparently these elements are uh, again there and I have said yes in view of that that person should not be the leader of a party yeah, but and I in this, doing this I exactly uh, uh, act in the same way as yeah. uh, as I criticize the leader of the Labour Party who happens to be from my political But here opinion. I have to ask you this question um, as as you well pointed out that you you spoke about both leaders of the um, uh, Maltese uh, parliament so the nationalist and the labor party and you have asked for the resignation of both leaders the allegations however I never asked for the resignation of Mr uh, Muscat no I did well, not ask for his resignation. Well, you, I have, you, I have you said don't that have he, trust I don't, at all. No, so. I don't have any trust. I believe that he is discrediting our political family. Yeah. But I don't think that it is for me. He has been elected by the people of Malta. It's for the people of Malta to come to that conclusion whether or not he should be, uh, be uh, 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 resigning. I never asked for his resignation. I, yeah. I just say, uh, criticize his behavior as leader of a government that is hosting and, and keeps protecting groups and keeps blocking justice from okay, doing but, its but, work. But, but when, with regards to, um, to Dr. Dalia, um, Dr. Dalia himself had said that uh, 
I am ready to go to the police commissioner whenever he wants. I am ready to Well, to I answer. hope that the police does its work regarding Mr. Delia or Mr. Dali or, or Mr. Midzi or Mr. Shembri or who, any other people that are found uh, indeed to be responsible for criminal yeah. behavior. Okay, but, but the question here is that it, the, the allegations of both um, leaders are completely um, different, um, the allegations that they are facing. No, sorry, I, I, I asked... Uh, I, I said what I said about Mr. Dali, da, Delia, Delia because I was asked expressly by a journalist from Malta what was my position and I would say if someone with that, uh, this kind of, under this kind of suspicions would, uh, would be in that position, I would ask him to resign yes, yes. because it doesn't give credibility to the party to have him as a leader in the same way as I think it doesn't give credibility to Malta to have uh, indeed uh, uh, but the allegations the are but I hope you appreciate that the allegations are completely different from yeah, each other because of course, yeah. of course they are different I know they are different and I think it's much more serious indeed in many respects the fact the the the, the not the allegations but the behavior of the prime minister who keeps abetting in his government to completely exposed crooks uh, and uh, and uh, the, that that is what leads me after all this time to to ask the question who actually controls whom How? are these two crooks uh, are are the is the prime minister controlling these crooks uh, and other crooks like for instance this guy Neville Gaffa who has been now exposed on this Libya scandal he has been scandal. he has resigned he, uh, he was asked course, to resign I mean, by the uh, finally minister. finally Finally, how many months ago, in June, last June, we uncovered all this scheme of the sale of um, medical visas. visas. Uh, and, and only now, after uh, his going to Libya and being uh, indeed uh, disavowed by the Libyan authorities, has finally the Prime Minister uh, uh, acted. But regarding Mr. Sembri and Mr. Uh, Mitzi, uh, my question is, is the Prime Minister controlling them or are they controlling the Prime Minister? It's, it's extremely unsettling, uh, not just for uh, disturbing, not just for the image of Malta, for the image of the Labour Party, but I would say for the image of all our political family, because I'm a socialist um, and it one last still to our family. Yeah, one last question, because I know you're in a hurry. Um, uh, one a particular um, criticism that has been um, raised in the in the Maltese environment in Maltese media towards you is that like, it's like you have an obsession about Malta. You know exactly what happens <laughs> no, in the Maltese. Well, first of all, let me Mal say, I, so, I know because I was, uh, I've been one of the members of this parliament who worked more on the Malta file, so to say, since the Panama Papers. And of course, after the killing of uh, Daphne, I felt the obligation to be really even more engaged and to help indeed those in Malta, not just our family but, uh, and friends, but those in Malta who really want justice to be made. I think this is an obligation, democratic obligation for a socialist, for a democrat, because what has happened in Malta it's not just concerning Malta, it's a, it concerns us all. It concerns democracy in the European Union. So I do it because I feel, I, I love Malta, I must say. I like Malta very much. It's a beautiful country and I like the people. I feel as a Portuguese with a lot of, of uh, uh, even uh, feelings, uh, uh, attitude in life, the culture, very simi similar. the culture, very similar to Malta. I know even of our historical uh, links <laughs> in the past. Um, so I, I, I really love Malta. I have uh, several Maltese friends, I must say. Nothing connected with uh, uh, all this work right. I've been doing. So I think it's my obligation because I think Malta is important. Many people may dismiss Malta. Oh, it's the smallest member state. Who cares about Malta? Only 400,000 people. I have heard that many times here in the European Parliament. I don't share that. It's it, regardless whether it's small or big. It's the European Union. It's about us all. And whatever happens in Malta, if Malta now goes more into this line of styling itself as a hub for cryptocurrencies, it's not just going to be ter terribly detrimental for the Maltese citizens. It's going to be terribly detrimental for all of us in the European Union. That's why I care. And since I've been one of the members who really uh, worked more on the Panama Papers file regarding Malta, 
was put in charge of that first mission that went to Malta after the, the assassination of Daphne, I feel I have the obligation to work and I work on the Malta case as I work in many other cases with as much as I, I can within my competence. But and you, do, you do appreciate that it's not just Malta that, are, that is corruption, no, but obviously course. in Portugal, the, in I'm Spain, time, you know. But you look, go to my site and see how many letters and denunciations about corruption in my own country regarding even people of my own party I've yeah. and, and, and actions by my own government I, I'm not doing all the time so this is not at all an obsession yeah. about Malta it's about an obsession about democracy and the rule of law yeah. and the fight against corruption in the European Union Mrs. Gomez one last question but you have to be short you said that you had uh, give your support to uh, Dr. Muscat when he became um, a prime I remember I gave a leadership a, 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 uh, a, a comment of the leadership of the Labour Party obviously he said that he is uh, um, going to resign um, in the coming uh, months he obviously as in uh, he said I will finish my term um, he had it was also an electoral pledge in fact and there's going to be a leadership contest in the Labour Party very very soon do you have anyone in which you favor? Not at all. I don't uh, really uh, know much and mingle in the uh, political life inside the Labour Party or any other party in Malta. All uh, what uh, uh, keeps me interested in Malta is about indeed uncovering these questions of corruption and of the rule of law that are so relevant for all of us in the European Union. Mrs. Gomez, thank you about very Malta. much for giving us this interview. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Infakarkom il li dan il program yistay jisegwit fu il portal tana independent.com.mt. Grazie hafna. Dan il program Jimmy Gio Plilek min Express Trailers Logo Graphics Jasmine Mitzi Financial Advisors Databyte Hortofile Chemimart Sarah Hair Salon Happy Day Juices by Rauch